meditation uh, and reflection about this past year. This year was a difficult year, and our congregation suffered many losses and far more than past years. This year was also a strange year. We observed Shiva more often than not on Zoom. And because of this, there was a regular Shiva minion in my own home for months on end. And yet, even though I sat by myself in my study, I strangely and perhaps even miraculously felt surrounded by hundreds of people. There we were huddled together on my laptop screen, all, all together trying to bring a measure of comfort to grieving friends. This was not the Shiva I had come to know in my 30 years of being called a rabbi. In the past, this is what I instead observed. More often than not, people would arrive and find their way to the kitchen and they would exchange sometimes uncomfortable hellos and words of it's so sad. They would talk about the weather's latest storm or the maddening traffic or a confounding Jets loss or on occasion a surprising Mets win. There were times when I would observe a beautiful moment of healing, a familiar face to the mourner but a stranger to me would come over and say, can I tell you about when your dad did this for me? Or can I tell you a story about your mom? There was a time they would begin. And that was my cue. I would offer a hug and a goodbye to the mourner because I knew that they were then in good hands. And I had confidence that such stories would uplift their spirits and maybe, maybe even fill their emptied hearts. I never heard those extra stories. They seemed private utterances between mourner and storyteller, between the bereaved and their comforter. But in this past year, however, I discovered something new. I had to stay in that virtual room because I was now managing the technology. I had to make sure Aunt You-Know-Who stayed muted when she loudly whispered something to her husband about a relative she hadn't seen in years. And when I heard, he looks like he put on some, I would quickly hit mute. And yet this year, there I was sitting quietly in the corner, as it were, listening to what would have been in years, past years, private conversations. And here is what I discovered. No one talked about the weather or traffic anymore. No one berated the Jets or the Mets even though they were deserving of such chastisements. Those matters were now as they should be inconsequential. No one had to drive through the snow or the rain to get to Shiva. No one bewailed our New York sports teams because they felt they only had a few minutes now to offer their words and I heard the most beautiful stories. One time I sat there alone in my study and I heard how a conductor on the Long Island Railroad became friends with the father of one of our members who was now mourning his father's death. And he said, we struck up a conversation years ago because he was always on my train. And a friendship began because of a chance encounter and my life is better for it, and I'm going to miss your dad. And I heard piles and piles of such memories. I felt like an interloper, and I also felt blessed as I listened in on these private conversations and remembrances. As these stories piled up on my computer screen, I learned so much about those we lost, this year, the memories of those we lost were given new life. Their stories were more easily told. Was it because Zoom somehow created a safe distance from which to tell these tales? I don't know for sure. 
But I do know this. We are better for it. We are better because of these newfound intimacies of sharing. Perhaps we have rediscovered during this most awful of years the power of telling stories. Perhaps we have relearned how to bring healing to our grieving friends. Perhaps we have been reminded that community is uplifted by such memories and the retelling of them. I know this for certain. We are better that more people learned about our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers, our wives and husbands and daughters and sons. We are uplifted by the secrets we discovered on our computer screens. Perhaps they never should have remained secrets and private utterances. I feel blessed that this strange year of Zoom has unlocked these stories and granted them the life they deserve. We are blessed when we learn again to remember and tell stories. We turn to the words of our tradition. We are again uplifted by the words of the psalmist, the 23rd Psalm.